welcome children to yet another session of improvement in food resources that is chapter number 15 in your science textbook in our previous session we studied about animal husbandry and we started with cattle farming in today's session we will learn about farm management practices basic requirements of cattle farming cattle health and diseases and cattle vaccination so let us start with farm management practices these practices are, are of various types like grooming of cattle shelter of cattle feeding of cattle health care of cattle so the basic requirement of cattle farming is to provide neat and clean shelter with a proper ventilation if we want to do cattle farming the first basic requirement is about the shelter the shelter in which we are going to keep our animals that should be neat and clean and it should be very well ventilated and uh, a well designed cattle shed should have continuous supply of water in it it should have good trough to feed animals it should have place for animals to lie down to take rest and there should be separation of different cows which are kept in that cattle shed and there should be drainage line in that cattle shed for cleaning of that cattle shed now floor and drainage system should be in a specific way that is well aligned drains should be there in this picture you can see that just behind the cattles there is a drainage system the floor should be non slippery and it should be easy to wash and dung and urine wash into the drains when we are cleaning the floor of the cattle shed it should go into the drains so that is a important part while maintaining cleanliness in the cattle shed feeding is a very important process for all living beings so here also in cattle shed there should be proper place for providing food to these animals and there should be proper feeding troughs for these animals in which the grass and other types of feed should be provided to these animals so these feed trough can be of two types sometimes they are provided with water supply and sometimes they are without water supply so here is a checklist for well managed cattle house it should have clean fresh continuous water supply adequate unspoiled food should be provided in troughs and dry not slippery floor it should have a dung and urine directed to covered dung pit or biogas unit to maintain cleanliness in the water uh, in cattle shed and it should have well thatched roof and there should not be any kind of smell in cattle shed and healthy looking animal should be there so regular brushing of body of these cattle is also one of the important process and which is done to remove dirt from their hair or from their outer body and also to remove loose hair from their body and this process of brushing these animals or removing the loose hair or dirt from their outer body is called as grooming so regular brushing of animals should be done to remove dirt and loose hair and external parasites can also be removed by this process when we are brushing them regularly washing of animals is also required so here in this picture you can see that uh, cows are getting brushed by proper brushes and uh, actually these cows these cattle enjoy this process and another important feature while maintaining the cattle shed is the floor of the cattle shed should be sloping to stay dry and to facilitate cleaning here in this diagram you can see children that the floor is slopy it is sloping towards the sides of the cattle shed and the sloped area is marked also so most cow sheds have sloped floors because it allows water run off to drain easily and it also makes the barn or shed easier to clean when hosing down or sometimes you know that children when these animals defecate or urinate that urine also passes from that area because of this slopey floor so floor should be slopey in cattle shed that is a very important aspect while managing cattle shed so now comes to cattle feed food is a very important aspect so cattle feed is also of different type here so the feed can be divided into two types one type is to support the animal for life 
which include all the basic nutrient in it and which is required by all type of animals all type of cows whether it is milch or drought so the basic nutrients are required by both types of animals that comes under this category and the second specialized category is of milk producing animals so when an animal is producing milk that time the food should be enriched with different types of nutrients which will help the animal to lactate more so during lactation period the animal should be provided with special kind of enriched food this animal feed includes roughage which is rich in fiber and concentrates which is rich in protein and other nutrients so roughage is required by both type of animals whether it is lactating or not lactating whereas concentrates are required by the animals which are lactating or which are about to deliver a calf or a baby and uh, so the, in that type of animals concentrates are required now roughages of dairy cattle are of sorghum silage coastal bermuda grass silage small grain silage straw corn stover and pasture and this concentrate is a special mixture which is made up of protein supplements such as oil cakes energy sources such as cereal grains it can be maize jowar or any other kind of grain and tapioca chips and laxative feeds such as brands rice bran wheat bran gram husk etc are generally used for this purpose so here you must have seen that such kind of uh, oil cakes are provided to animals in dairy and these are highly rich in nutrient and uh, there is total mixed ration also which is provided to these animal there are so many companies which provide this total mixed ration which uh, consists of all the types of nutrients which are required by these animals in this diagram you can see that there is a picture of various types of grains and various types of fibers also so it is a mixture of fibers and concentrates and uh, some companies provide this to various types of uh, people those who have cattle shed to feed their animals so cattle need balanced rations containing all nutrients in proportionate amount besides such nutritious food material certain feed additives containing micronutrients promote the health and milk output of the dairy animals so there is one more picture here you can see a, a special type of sentence is written here that is fiber degrading enzyme increases dairy cow milk production so that is a very new thing children very few people know about it that there is a fiber degrading enzyme which increases milk production in these animals so if these animals are provided with such kind of enzymes then maybe the farmers can increase the lactation in these animals so the disease besides causing death reduce milk production a healthy animal feeds regularly and has a normal posture the parasites of the cattle may be both external and internal that we will discuss now only and uh, the external parasites live on the skin and mainly causes skin diseases and the internal parasite like flukes damages the liver and other body parts and infectious diseases are also caused by these bacteria and viruses which are present in our surrounding vaccinations are also given to farm animals like human being and these vaccinations can be given for various types of virus and bacterial infections now let us discuss about these health aspect of cattle farming in detail so sign of a good health are various types like eating pattern is, should be normal if the eating pattern of the animal is normal the animal is completely healthy animal should be alert bright eyes and a shiny coat of the body and normal feces and urine vital signs and uh, reproduction is also one of the sign which shows that the animal is healthy so these are the general signs which tells us that the animal is keeping healthy so how do i know if my animal is sick or not for that there are various characteristic features which can be noticed in a sick animal so signs of poor health include when animal 
strays off by themselves and hold their head down it is a good sign that they are not well children you must have seen sometime when we give visit to some dairy or to villages there we see that some animals some cattle some cows continuously strays and that straying is abnormal and if the animal is keeping the head down continuously these are the sign that the animal is not well lower production of milk is also not a good sign rough looking dull hair coat or skin that stays up when pinched is also a sign of poor health of that animal discolored feces urine can be considered as a sign of trouble in that animal the animal's eyes should be bright and their membranes should be pinkish one of the easiest sign to notice is when an animal goes for feed that time by looking at the activities of this animal you can observe whether it is having a good health or not now let us discuss about various types of diseases with which these animals can suffer so these diseases can be categorized into bacterial diseases viral diseases and hemoprotozoan diseases and parasitic diseases bacterial diseases can be tuberculosis paratuberculosis brucellosis and hemorrhagic septicemia and joint ill viral diseases can be hand foot mouth disease infectious bovine rhino disease and rinder pest disease and hemoprotozoan disease can be thylariosis disease and parasitic disease can be fasciolosis disease children now we will study about these uh, diseases of animals uh, in short here uh, we will start with the cattle parasites these cattle parasites are of two types internal parasites and external parasites when the parasite is on outside body of the host that time it is called as external parasite and when it is inside the body of the host it is called as internal parasite so let us discuss with the internal parasites they are not visible in the host and effects are seen in the host and there are certain sign which are shown by the host animal by which a doctor or some person can observe that uh, this particular cattle is having some internal parasitic infection these parasites can be divided into three groups mainly round worms tape worms and flukes and uh, another uh, aspect is there that is these flukes can be specifically attacking on the liver so this can be liver flukes and meningeal worms cocidiosis can also be there external parasites are of various types like ticks mites flies lice bots etc and symptoms of parasitic infestation in cattle are parasite to the stomach and intestine causes anemia scouring depression and death of these animals now let us discuss about the very common viral disease in these cattle that is known as foot and mouth disease foot and mouth disease is highly contagious viral disease of the domestic cloven hoofed and many wild animals characterized by erosion in the mucosa of the mouth and hooves you must have heard about one of a very common hand foot mouth disease in children also so that comes from these cattle only so uh, this is one of the major viral disease in these animals another one is also there which is bovine virus diarrhea which is also known as bvd common throughout the united state and may appear in mild acute and chronic forms and it is spreads by contact now there is another type of disease that is lymph node enlargement in this disease here you can see on the body of these animal there is a big bulge like uh, structure so that is a sign of lymph node enlargement that is again not normal condition of the animal again in this picture you can see the bacterial disease in these cattle that is tuberculosis yes like human being these animals also suffer with tb tuberculosis so chronic bacterial disease of the animal is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium bovis in case of human mycobacterium tuberculosis is the major causative agent of tb whereas in case of tuberculosis in these animals mycobacterium bovis is also causing it 
hemorrhagic septicemia is also one of the bacterial disease in these cattle or these animals here anthrax is also one of the disease here in this picture you can see the blood is coming out from the nose of the cattle and in this picture you can see edema of neck and brisket region where the swelling can be easily observed in the neck region and mouth region of these animals and this is purulent oculo nasal discharge which comes out continuously from the nose of these animals it is also a sign of unhealthy animal now like human being these animals are also provided with certain kinds of vaccination so that they will not get these infections not only this there are proper veterinary doctors are there to take care of the health of these cattle now let us summarize uh, about these diseases which we have done now foot and mouth disease fmd is a severe highly contagious viral disease of the cattle rinder pest is an acute highly contagious viral disease of ruminant animals primarily cattle caused by morbillivirus and anthrax is a disease caused by the spore forming bacterium bacillus anthracis commonly attacking cattle black quarter is an acute infectious and highly fatal bacterial disease of the cattle caused by clostridium chauvoi and now let us conclude what we have done today we started our session with management of cattle farming especially in case of cattle shed we studied about the various aspect which should be taken care while starting a cattle shed or uh, while taking a animal to cattle shed and we also studied about the basic requirements like uh, the cattle shed should be well ventilated should be neat and clean there should be proper space for animals to live in cattle shed to take rest and there should be slopey floor in the cattle shed then we studied about the process of grooming in which we realize the importance of grooming in these animals and then we studied about the feeding of these animals in which we studied that there are two types of food requirements by these animal for normal animal the normal food which is rich in roughage is required and for lactating animal the special type of food is required by these animal which will help these animal in increase the milk production and then we studied about the health of these animals we studied that how we can maintain good health of these animals then we studied about the various viral bacterial parasitic infections in which we studied about our external and internal infection and we also studied about the various types of diseases which can occur in these animals